Okay, you're good to go. Good to start, my friend. Yep. Hey there, true believers, and welcome to episode 12 of the Marvel Mondays initiative here on the penultimate conquest. Today's topic is, of course, our discussion of Captain America, the first Avenger, as part of our MCU Rewind series, where we rewatch and rank the MCU films. But before we get into our discussion, we've got a little housekeeping. If you're watching on YouTube, consider dropping a like and a sub, and don't forget to hit the bell to get notifications for all our shows, like our video game show, the Penultimate Conquest podcast, our TV and movies podcast, The Cross Media Show, and our anime show, Anime Nation, as well as our new show, Stats on Stats. Um, update on stream and uh, streaming schedule. No uh, Resident Evil uh, stream tonight with Tessa. Uh, check back next week. We'll see. Um, Ruben, are you sprinkling in some Mass Effect this week? Yeah, I figured since Tessa's not streaming today, I might just stream some Mass Effect. Or some Knockout City. Oh, yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Get the oh, we'll we'll talk. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk. Okay. And this is a great place to plug uh, our merch store. Don't forget, we've got merch up on our website, thepenultimateconquest.com slash merch. Just like Ruben is showing off now uh, in the black oh. colorway with the nice blue letters. It looks great. It looks amazing. I get, I get mine in tomorrow, and I'm very excited. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Christian Macias, your curator of cinema and host for the evening. And alongside me today is the friendly neighborhood co-host of all things Marvel and Dest Destiny, the daddy-to-be, Eric Ginn. Hi, friend. Hey, what's up, Christian? I, I feel so out of it because everyone's talking about Knockout City and I, I haven't played any of it. I have no idea. I haven't played one round. Haven't played? Mm -mm. My time has been um, going through catching up on Critical Role and playing Persona 5 Strikers. That's about it. And a sprinkling of Overwatch. So that's all I've been doing. Yeah, but Eric, okay, actually, what if you can play tonight? Uh, maybe we'll see. Tess and I are having another movie night tonight. We're going to watch, um, get back into the conjuring to get ready for the new movie. So okay. I'm going to rewatch all the conjuring movies. All right. One They're day I'll, I'll, one day I'll be invited over to the Ginn household and we'll all watch a movie together. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe it'll be an MCU movie. Our Who couch knows? can fit like seven people. So oh, sweet. That, that no amazing. Worries. Does that mean I get that and, invite too? Yeah. I mean, you guys have to pay for your own flight down here, but yeah, sure. <laughs> We'll we'll put you up. We'll, we'll, we'll put you up for the week. You guys won't have to worry about anything. So, All right. and who's that other voice? You may be you may be wondering. Rounding out the war table, of course, our one and only director of operations, Ruben Guerrero. How are you, my friend? I'm good, Christian. How are you? God, dude, <laughs> this guy, <laughs> this guy always brings us the random oh, energy to the show. I love it. I figured out how to finally use my stream deck, so I figured. Oh, so you just push a button and it zooms in? Why not use it? Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. I love that. You guys, I have some some cool Marvel news to, to share with you guys before we even get into it. You guys ready for this? Let's yes. Um, as the time at the time of recording, Loki premieres this Wednesday, two days from now. And from posting, it Loki's tomorrow. Are you guys excited first and foremost? I'm at like nine. I'm very ready for this. I'm ready for like Doctor Who and CU stuff. Yeah. For Ruben. for me, Loki is kind of like at a six, but like Owen Wilson brings it up to a nine, you know? Just, oh my wow. God. Owen Wilson's in the Just song. hearing him say, wow, one more time. It just gets me. Are you Loki? Wow. <laughs> I've heard his, I've heard his character is like supposed to be like pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. I'm super excited. Um, so yeah, it, ahead of that, I got some stuff based on Loki from Twitter. There was an article that came out today from Empire, uh, wherein Kevin Feige says that Loki will have more impact on the MCU than any other show thus far, which is very exciting. And I want to read you two, two quick paragraphs we can, we can react to. With a timeline hopping plot and an alt universe Loki at its heart, you'd be forgiven for thinking that Loki will be a largely standalone adventure away from the main events of the MCU. Not so, according to head honcho Kevin Feige. It's tremendously important, he says. It perhaps will have more impact on the MCU than any of the shows thus far. What everybody thought about WandaVision and, and was sort of true, and The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which was sort of true, is even more true for Loki. 
And just as WandaVision gave us Wanda in full Scarlet Witch garb, and the Falcon and Winter Soldier gave us Sam Wilson as a fully-fledged Captain America, it seems that Loki might prove similarly transformative for its central character. Quote, you want to see, after six hours or so, characters change and evolve, hence Feige. We don't make these shows to not be radical, right? Which is insane to me. Like, I did not, ex I thought the show was going to be just like a fun romp kind of thing, but this is going to have some insane ramifications for the MCU that I'm, that I'm not expecting. Yeah, I thought that freaking WandaVision had ramifications for the MCU, but this is they're making it sound like, well, I mean, he did say it, but like bigger picture is just, oh, God, I'm so excited. Oh, man, I can't wait. I, th I think it's one of those things where, so with WandaVision, the main story, even though we kind of went like off the rails with what it could be, the main story was about Wanda like getting over her grief. And her becoming Scarlet Witch. Uh, Falcon Winter Soldier was about, you know, people dealing with the blip. Um, very much more a more political show and just Sam becoming Captain America. So it's like their story. Whereas this one, the Loki we know is dead. So he's gone. This is like this is alternate universe one. And he can go just mess things up. Like, yeah. let him loose. Let him go have fun. Um, yeah. Especially if we got the TVA involved and we're going to different timelines and stuff, I think some stuff's going to get messed up. So I'm very excited. I think seeing 2012 arrogant, like egotistic Loki, okay, like in in comparison, not in comparison, like in conjunction with like all the uh, timeline stuff and alternate universe shenanigans, it's gonna be pretty pretty fun show, I think. Yeah. And um, with that, some... no, go ahead. No, no please, no, please. No, go ahead. I got nothing. Okay, some early reviews came like uh, across my timeline. Uh, it seems to be like the first two episodes were shown to a select few people. And episode one seems to be getting mixed reviews, but critics are, are arguing that it's actually a necessary setup for the show, saying it's a bit messy, but you have to introduce the TVA. And all that setup pays off in episode two, where the show really starts to, sh sh the show really starts to shine. Uh, so I can't wait. And I, I don't know if this Wednesday we get two episodes or we just get the one. I, I don't know. I think, I we, think just we just get, get one. one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. What? How many episodes is this? Is it just six? six. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we know how but long? But it's the only show to have a confirmed second season. So. Okay. Really? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yep. Interesting. It's the only one. Do we know how long this is going to be? Is it going to be like 45 minutes? Is it I think they said 40 to 50. So I think they said it's going to be like what Falcon and Winter Soldier length of episodes. So okay, that excites me. Yeah. I kind of wish that we get to see just like a Marvel TV show, just the TVA itself. You know what I'm saying? Like Owen Wilson doing his, his thing and like fixing stuff behind the scenes in the future. For all we know. For all we know, this could be it. Who knows? No, yeah, but like Loki's in this, you know. Like I'm, I'm hoping this gets a spinoff. This is already a spinoff, no? Well, Loki, we may Loki hate is. the TVA. You may not like Owen Wilson at all. That's impossible. So no, I'm just saying, like his no, character I know, I know. may not be great. Although I did see something else that we can throw in the Loki thing. Apparently, there was a piece of um, a picture or something taken on the set. That shows that Loki may be gender fluid. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I just oh, saw nice. that. Interesting. Very interesting. You see that on Twitter? No, I just mm -hmm. looked I didn't up see it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. CNN is saying mm -hmm. Loki oh, I, being gender fluid. I, I thought that. I thought that was cool. That is cool. Very cool. I love seeing progressive stuff in the MCU like that. Moving Very on. Cool. Some... Our chance. Oh yeah. Moving on to some more Marvel news. Avengers Camp Campus opened late last week. And I had no idea what it was until it opened and I saw videos of it. It's just like a like a little section in Disneyland, right? Yep. Like a, like a Cars Land or something, right? Mm -hmm. But more successful. I don't know. That Cars Land Whoa. is pretty successful, man. Uh, okay. Dude, the neon lights in Cars Land when it's like dark? I don't know. I don't know if Avengers can compete with that aesthetic oh. of Radiator Springs. I'll say it. Okay. Man, I still want to go to this place so bad. Like I was saw in the video of just like the... Uh, animatronic Spider-Man just swinging through oh, everything. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, that looks so cool! It's animatronic? Yeah, the so one swinging. A, Sorry, yeah, the one swinging. Oh, I'm okay. Sorry, Ruben. 
So I think it was the last thing that uh, I forget the guy who was on Mythbusters. He unfortunately passed away last year. Grant Embers. Yeah, I can't remember his name. He's... This is apparently one of the things he worked on, and so it looks fantastic. Like it really does. I the did only... like that. Th- oh, I'm sorry. No, the only stuff I saw was Sp- like Spider Man, uh, like doing some flips and stuff. Doctor mm-hmm. Strange coming uh, coming in, and then. Of course, uh, Anthony Mackie getting to visit campus, and he gave the shield, his shield, to the Avengers campus, Captain America, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, that was awesome. Pretty dope. Yeah. Let's all go. Let's do a live show at Avengers campus. Let's do it. I will absolutely do that. I guess Eric Ru- No, is it Ruben? Get the credit card. Ooh. The company credit card. The company Ooh. card. Hey, Ruben. You see things. Uh, it's not looking good for the company card. Hey, after 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 E three, man, everyone's gonna pick up on Penultimate Conquest. Let's do it. Oh, Let's yeah. hope. Let's hope. My, la- my last bit of Marvel news before we get to the topic of the show is um, some casting news for Spider-Verse 2. Not MCU-related, but uh, Marvel-related. Issa Rae has been cast in Into the Spider-Verse uh-huh. 2. Yeah. Very cool Let's stuff. Go. I don't know who she's playing. I don't know if that was put anywhere, but she has been cast. Spider-Woman. I, that's what I was thinking, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's playing mm-hmm. Spider-Woman. Oh, you know for a fact. God, it, that so oh, I can't wait for this movie. So you're in with Sony, like I'm in with John Watts. No, I just read an article that said that I, I can read Ruben. Well, no, because I, I I didn't think they have the uh you know no, out there. As, yeah, she is cast as Spider Woman. That's pretty cool. Very exciting stuff. The question is, oh. do we want to see a Spider Verse two, or do we want to see Far uh, No Way Home? Like what am I? What are we more excited for? Is yeah. that what you're asking? Yeah. What are you more excited for? I'm a sucker for the MCU, so I'll say Far From Home. Uh, I'll I'll go I'll go No Way Home as well. Um, uh, but I mean, obviously, once Into the Spider Verse two comes out, I'm very excited for. Oh that. yeah, yeah, of course. Like, don't get me wrong, but the, what Sony's doing with the animation is yeah, they're insane. killing it there. Insane. Yeah. yeah. And plus, I just yeah, want to prove Eric wrong, you know. I wasn't a huge fan of Mitchell vs. the Machines, but they, I all admit, like the animation was like the movie was really fantastic. Good. Really good, I liked it a lot. Sure. <laughs> Moving on to at last our topic of the show: Captain America: The First Avenger, released on May seventh, twenty eleven. Directed by none other than Joe Johnston, with a runtime of two hours and four minutes, a budget of $140 million, and a box office worldwide gross of $370 million. Um, so not Too even double. Low. Too low, Too yeah. Low. Thor actually made more money than, than Captain wild. America. Yeah, absolutely. Week, right? I just wanted to... Ugh. Really? That kind of blew my mind, dude. Like, really? Like, this is... Far oh, and away the better movie. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad we're. Yeah, there's all no the argument. Right there's no argument okay. here. That this I'm just is... saying I'm glad because uh, you know some things were said last week, and it made it sound like Eric, you were saying that Thor was a better movie. I just want to make Thor sure. is a better what? No, okay. I never right. said that. All right. I, my goal was to say that Thor was better than the Incredible Hulk, and I succeeded in that campaign. I've heard it both There ways. is no. There's. There's what? No. <laughs> I've heard it both ways. Like, there's no, like, this is probably, I don't want to spoil it toward the end. This is up top for me. Like, this, I think this may be in my top 10 MCU movies, period. So. Really? Mm hmm. But you agree that this is the worst of the Captain America trilogies, correct? This and by worst, like, I mean, like, the least best. Yeah. The least best. This is, this is it. Cause, like, Winter Soldier is on another level and Civil War is on a whole nother level. But this is like, you need this movie to show where Cap is. They're so all S tier, baby. I agree. They're all S tier. Yes, but this is like the bottom of the S tier. No, there is no like, bottom it, it, of the S tier. They're all S tier. Captain America has the best trilogy. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's no argument this is, there, I think. All right. Yeah, this is number 10 for me in MCU movies. Okay. Although. If you think about it, there is an argument to be made that like Captain America is a static character that he doesn't really have any huge change throughout the trilogy. Even though his movies are good, he his character fundamentally stays the same. You get more growth out of Thor and uh, Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man, so Tony Stark. 
when you do Captain America. Just think about it. I mean, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. There's more character growth for Thor. I don't know about for Iron Man. Uh, well, I would say throughout the whole th- trilogy of Iron Man, there's not really more. Iron Man grows the most. Really? You think? Yeah. Because I think the, the only change we see is in Iron Man 1. Uh, I guess Iron Man 2 as well, yeah. Where he... But moving back. Yeah, we'll sorry. get into it. Yeah, we'll get into it. I, I do want to ask real quick. Who do you think would win in a, um arm wrestling contest between Chris Hemsworth and Chris Evans? Chris Hemsworth now? Definitely Chris Hemsworth. No, in this era. Like, uh, between Thor, Thor I'm, 1 era... I'm giving it to Chris Evans. Yeah. Chris Evans. Like, Chris Evans... Captain America in the first one, I think, was much bigger than Chris Hemsworth in Thor 1. Brolic. My eyes in the theater watching him come out of that shell. Like, Jeez. are you kidding me? Is these this juicy? We got sp- uh, It looked like they sprayed water on him right before they came out. I think he was that's glistening. Pro- most likely what they did. <laughs> glistening. He's all steamy and he's all breathing all heavy. And I'm just like, damn, that's hot. But my first question here uh, for you guys is, did you guys watch this in theaters at all? Do you remember watching this? Oh, yeah. I did. Yeah. What a time. This is back when movie theaters, like, at least on the West Coast, midnight showings were still at midnight. So I remember watching this and, like, being so giddy in my seat thinking, like, oh, my God, this is the last one before we get a team-up movie. Like, it's actually happening. I can't wait. When did this movie come out again? I'm sorry. May 7th, 2011. So this would be a whole year before the Avengers would come out. That was Thor. That was Thor. Thor was May 7th, 2011, I believe. This yeah, one I was, thought this um, was a summer movie. No, because... What? I went in and, and uh, changed the dates, I thought. Hold on, I got you. Yeah, please. If you can uh, find This that. movie released on July 19th, 2011. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, thank you. There you go. That makes more sense because I saw this in Florida and usually my family goes down to Florida for summer vacation and I basically had to drag everybody to come out and go to the movies and see this movie because there was nothing. Yeah. I don't think there was anything else playing, but that was actually really good. And uh, yeah, everybody, not everybody liked it, but like, you know, everybody sucks. It's good. I I remember I saw it. This was like an awkward time. I went to go see it with the preacher of my grandmother's church at the time because he had no one to go see it with. Like, and uh, I was like, "I'll I'll go see it with you." Um, and so he actually he actually used the movie in his next sermon, which was interesting. But, oh um, my god! <laughs> yeah, he, um, it was weird. I was it was weird, um, but. Um, that's first. That's how the first time I saw it. Um, never Amazing. spoke with him again. After that, really. <laughs> I love that we both have a history of going to the movies with someone and then never talking to them ever again <laughs> after it, Eric. I wanted to mention one more thing. If you guys remember the like marketing campaign for this movie, it was a lot of like shots of World War II soldiers. It's all in black and white, and they would like Photoshop captain america in in like different locations so there's like a d-day one of him like getting ready to storm the beach of normandy which is like really cool that's pretty cool i didn't know yeah we didn't get like a war movie that i thought we were gonna get with this movie but i was still pleasantly surprised i got i love the ride of captain america one great movie so moving on do we think this works as an origin movie is it a success how does it compare to other Phase 1 movies? This is definitely a success. I think this shows you the type of person that uh, Steve Rogers is. And it shows you like that he has the power to uh, essentially like not influence. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. Uh, not influence people to do the right thing, but like... Inspire. There you go. Inspire people mm. to be better. In my opinion. He's, I, he's just yeah. good. Yeah. He's lawful good. Yeah. That's what he is, and that's what makes it so good. Like usually it's hard too with these kind of characters with like Captain America and Superman to really show, hey, are there any flaws or anything? Uh, but you know, 
they go through a lot. Like, you know, Cap loses Bucky uh, in this movie. He, you know, he's kind of a um, dancing bear in the beginning of the movie when he gets his powers. Like, I, I just want to help people. And like, nope, we're going to make you a marketing tool, buddy. Um, and he goes through a lot of loss in this. And But at the end of the day, he's still that paragon of justice, that paragon of, you know, good that I think really sets the stage for all the other movies. Like, what makes Winter Soldier and Civil War more impactful is that we see that Steve Rogers is a really good person. Mm-hmm. I think for me, what makes uh, his origin so special is that Steve starts out as like the very clear underdog. And even after he gets his power, he's he still humble. holds on to. Yeah, he's he's still humble. He still holds on to that underdog spirit that you can't help but root for and feel inspired by. And that continues not through just the rest of the movie, obviously, but through the rest of, the, I think, the MCU franchise, which like, God, man. Kevin Feige, can't believe you've done this. What did you grab, Ruben? I saw you were grabbing something. Just how perfect the Steelbook cover of, the, of this movie is. Like, come on. It's fucking amazing. It's a weird poster. I will say that. It's a cool <laughs> Steelbook, but I do not. I did not like that poster one bit. Just rip it on this guy's Steelbook, huh? Damn. I know, right? Like. Plus, it's also it's cool. hey, that side's cool. That's that cool. yeah, really it's cool. cool. Like that's awesome. It's it's just, it's got like the Spider-Man MCU problem where with the posters they put everything on it. Yeah. If, it if there's one much. thing, if there's one thing that Marvel needs help with, it is creating some cool posters. Yeah, I don't know about that. What do you, what do you mean? I think do I you have... not remember the PS2 Black Panther poster. No. What? Where he was like sitting on he was sitting on the throne and it looked so bad. Uh it's and he's he doesn't have his helmet on or anything. It looks like PS2 graphics. It's it's bad. Yeah, Marvel Marvel doesn't have the best posters. I think I have every MCU movie besides the freaking uh Spider Man steelbooks, and I'm very upset about that. I yeah. wanted the uh like Infinity Saga thing that came out. At Best Buy. Oh man. Yeah, that, that thing looked cool. Yep, two hundred twenty nine bucks. Worth it. We put it on the company Jump. card, guys. <laughs> it exists. Oh yeah, it yeah, exists, but, I... but we're like in heavy debt. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. But like, I, I wanted to ask, like, I guess maybe this is deep, like it's starting to get deeper in conversation, but like, do you think this origin story is better than Tony Stark's? I think for me personally, it makes me like Cap more, because like you, uh, I don't know, I think it was you that said like it. it Steve has that underdog uh, story, and he continues to stay the underdog even after he becomes Captain America, and I guess that's something like I'm a fan of. Like as you can see, I got the the uh, poster of Cap is worthy up there. I got a freaking Captain America shield. So, like, I, for me, personally, I think that is a much better story than Tony being this pompous, for all intents and purposes, douchebag that turns into less of a douchebag throughout the MCU, but still a douchebag, but, like, you kind of love him. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think this is a better, this is a better origin story in terms of where we're just looking at Steve and Tony. Right. Like, I think this movie is about Steve Rogers. And all of these movies are about Steve Rogers. Like, Captain America was just the, just a title he had. Um, that's why, like, Captain Rogers, like, that's, that's the important part of this movie, is to figure out who Steve Rogers is. And, um, Tony, there's a lot going on with Tony. Like, I feel mm. as though Tony's arc doesn't get better until more movies we get into where, you know, he he's self-centered, pompous, and then you have to go through the Avengers, Iron Man, two, Iron Man 3, Ultron phase where it's like, all right, Tony's clearly messed up. 
And then when you get to the phase three part where he's starting to mentor Peter and then he eventually sacrifices himself, like that's where Tony's art gets better. Whereas this one, Steve Rogers, you said earlier, like Steve Rogers doesn't really have an arc in this one. And I think that's really, I think that's true in a sense, but it also just shows I'm losing my train of thought already. <laughs> Ruben, say something <laughs> while I think. Um, Steve Rogers just... Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers just makes me want to be a better person. Yeah, I think to Eric's point, I was kind of arguing more that... He, like, we have a very clear defining point of who Steve Rogers is at the beginning. Um, and there's not much change through that until the end he, he it's it's still the very same steve rogers the good person and i i to your point no he he, he does have some kind of like arc in there that we see right yeah but it's the also he, the way he handles being captain america sorry right. i interrupted you no no it's okay I'm, i actually interrupted you i apologize um it's also kind of like thor in thor one like thor doesn't really have a much of a arc in the first Thor movie, like he just becomes a little bit nicer. We had an argument about this last week. Right, there is an. He's arc learned nothing. One. I've learned, learned nothing. nothing. That movie is. We literally had this arc last week. Okay. Okay. Well, better than Incredible Hulk by our standards, though. Absolutely right. But what I'm saying is, the bigger arc for Thor is in between Thor, uh, Dark World, and Ragnarok. Like he becomes a slightly better person but he's still the prince that thinks he can attain it all i think if we're going back to steve rogers here i think what makes it so great is that even throughout the other movies he still retains who he is as steve rogers yeah. like yeah. you know with everything and that's why i think they said that's the difference like when we talk about falcon Winter Soldier, like the difference between Steve Rogers and John Walker was that Steve Rogers um, didn't use it. Like he he was Steve Rogers first, and like being from that era, he knew that there was a definite right and wrong. And even like in Winter Soldier, when they said, "Hey, look, we're gonna have all these guns pointed at people up in the sky, and we'll eliminate targets," like this isn't no, like you can't do this. Like he he stood up to the man. <laughs> Basically, he stood up to the government and said, like, no, you're being wrong here. Even yeah, though like, he's like, he, yeah, even though he's Captain America, it's like, no, I'm telling you when you're doing the wrong thing here. Whereas, you know, other people who have tried to be Captain America. They're the government, like they think they are the law. And that's and that's where this movie shines. It shows that Steve Rogers is just, like I said, a good person. And he he's unshakable really. Yeah. No matter what comes his way, he still gets back up. I, can do this I, think, all day. I think I think what's cool about Steve is that, and like Eric mentioned, um, Steve just doesn't like bullies. And even... Yeah, that scene we'll, is so good. We'll, we'll see in later films, but sometimes you're, the bullies can be your own government. And even though you're like this, like, part of this war industrial complex as this marketing scheme propaganda man like steve doesn't care and if you're doing the wrong thing he'll let you know and i like i just love that about him and also he's funny he's funny in this movie oh yeah when peggy's like you can't give me orders he's like the hell i can't i'm a captain now <laughs> it just jumps <laughs> yeah. i don't know God, I what a I tremendous line just a. Uh... Do you want to kill Nazis? No, I don't want to kill anybody. I just don't like bullies. I'm like, ah, God, it's so good. Yeah, there's a ton of, of quotes that I just wrote down that, like, we'll see reverberated throughout the MCU. And that's, like, that whole scene. Eric is, like, yeah, so poignant. A good, a good man. Oh, God, that's... And then you got, for me, a top three moment in the MCU where he jumps on the grenade. The dummy grenade. Oh, yeah. Like, right there. Like, you're worthy of... That's where Mjolnir was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can hold me. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> that moment. Oh, man. Do, what does what uh, Tommy Lee Jones say? He's still still skinny, he's, though. He's, yeah, he's still skinny, though. That's so good. <laughs> but, like, that's that's when you just knew. Like, everyone was on board with Steve. Like, yep, this is this is the guy. Yep. Um, 
what was your favorite? I guess who was your favorite character, like side character in this movie? Doctor Erskine. Yeah, me too. Stanley fucking Tucci, man. Yeah, dude, I did not know it was Stanley Tucci for the longest time until yeah. I like rewatched it a few years ago. Oh, so man. good, so he's good. so good. He could do anything. Stanley Tucci can do anything. Uh, I agree. My favorite side character, or. Are... I don't want to say Stanley Tucci because obviously that's the easy way out here. Um, I like Tommy Lee Jones. I thought Tommy Lee Jones yeah. was fun in this movie. Let me go with Peggy. Just I would consider her a main character. Well, I mean, like the main character is Captain America. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But if we're going other side characters, I definitely think. Um, crap! What's this guy's name? Uh, Oh, the Asian man from Fresno. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> We're taking all of them with us? I'm from yeah. Fresno, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We also see Tell him in the future. Yeah. We do? Yeah, don't say it. Don't say it. No, no, no. Oh. 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 Sorry. Yes, we do. Sorry. <laughs> we'll find out in the future. Is it Simu? Maybe. No. What? Don't leave, it. Don't leave this man like this. Let's just tell him. Well, we can't tell what? him. No, no, no. We can't tell we him. We gotta, him. Don't, don't, don't tell him. This. No, no. Don't say it. Don't say Don't it. tell me. Don't tell me. Don't, don't tell me. It. What? All right. It's a. I. I. No, I can't no. tell him the phase. No. Nope. Can't tell him the phase at least. No. We'll. We'll let him figure it yeah, out. Yeah. We'll when we. When we get there, it'll. Yeah. We'll see if he figures okay. it out. Okay. okay. I do have one thing that's weird that bothers me to this day. What's that? How old is Howard Stark in this movie? And how old was he when he finally had Tony? Because this is like 1945, 46. I can tell you right, right? now. Okay, all right. So 46 and then 50. He's got to be in his... No later than mid-20s. It has to yeah, be. Yeah, you, you have... You have caught me in Howard the Stark here. was born in 1917. His son Tony was born when he was 53. You're telling that me that Howard sense. Stark was 80 something when he died? Howard Stark was uh, died 21 years later. He was 73 or 74. So you're telling me that? Uh, so hold on. If I look like that at 73, I'm gonna be very happy. So he's almost 30 in, in World War II. Yeah. Tw 20 years later, in the 70s, he has Tony. Mm -hmm. By the time we get to Avengers, Tony's 40? I would say Tony's his 40s and his 50s. I'd say I think he's like in his early 50s in Endgame. Wow. Wow. So. So it... Robert Downey Jr., Jr., the person, is he in his early 40s when Iron Man 1 is being filmed? Yeah, 40, he was 43 when they started Iron Man 1. Wow, he, lo he looked fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's like 55, 56. I think he's 56 right now. He still looks fantastic. He still does Don not. Cheadle is also 56. That's 57, I think. Don so Cheadle does an age. He, he's starting to show his age now, which is, like, sad. No. That all these characters are showing their age now. I don't think so. So why you get the young bloods in? Yeah, the young bloods. Okay, Which have a few... go ahead. Concerns me because Anthony Mackie is like forty-one. Anthony so Mackie. again, so I need him as Cap for like twenty more years. So <laughs> I don't know if we're getting twenty more years out of Anthony. I said like I said like we're probably gonna get him for another maybe two ten movies maybe maybe ten ten. You think he's gonna be fifty when he's playing Captain America? Why not? <laughs> well, I mean, that would probably be like what three movies? I I, I could say I we'll could see. say either like another. Well, we know Captain America Four is being is already confirmed. Uh, Who? Falcon and the Winter Soldier season two? No. Okay. I don't think they're doing that. Okay. And then you got the team up movie, whatever the team up movie is going right. to be for this phase. So that's so two movies right there. I think we get uh. Another trilogy, Captain America four, uh, four, five, and six. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, another that, ten I'd years. be down for that. Yeah. I never want to die. 
That way I can keep watching these movies. You know what Listen. I mean? Or or if I do die, like can I get them all in heaven? Yeah. If I, I if I make it there. Yeah. I guess. Christian, your heaven is going to be your own personal movie theater, man. Yeah, with like nothing but waifus everywhere. Yeah, nothing but waifus and just whenever you say what you want to watch and it just starts playing. Yeah. What's Eric up to? Show me. <laughs> yeah. Eric's okay, I... all your favorite directors like, hey, I want him to sit down this movie with me and we'll talk about it. Maybe Jackson will be there. That'd be a good time. Okay, I, I have I have another question for you guys. It's kind of a toughie. Ooh, we like to sure. think of... Oh yeah, oh yeah. We like to think of Iron Man as kind of like the heart of the MCU. He's the one that got it started. He's the one that connects all these characters. He's the one we cry for at the end of Endgame, right? Is there a conversation, an argument to be made for Steve Rogers as the heart of the MCU? Is he the heart of the Avengers team? What do we think? Mm-hmm. He's the heart for me. Yeah, I would say so. For me, it kind of like brings the... I guess age old question, not really age old question. Um, who was right in Civil War? Uh, it, for, age old question. Yeah, who was a right? Five year old question. Who was right? Oh, it doesn't feel like five years. The beginning yeah. of time. It doesn't feel like five years. Um, it, it depends on your answer. If if you think Cap was right, then I think Cap is your is the heart of the MCU for you. Yeah. Not to take any I think Tony for me is the backbone. Ooh, okay. Tony's like the foundation. Yeah. Like he like everything like in the that. MCU can go back to him. Like he's what holds it all together. Yeah, I like that. Um too. and Cap is like the beating heart of um of this team. And you feel inspired by him. So God, I love sure. Captain America so much, dude. Oh my god. It's he, so good. He really is. He makes he sure just, I don't know. He's like stoic but safe at the same time. Like he feels warm, but also like protective. I, I, He's whatever a himbo, Chris Evans, cha- a himbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to make it clear, and I wrote this down in my notes. Canonically, Steve Rogers, a virgin in the MCU. <laughs> Just in case I you didn't mean... know, when he got back to Peggy and Endgame, he got his fuck on Christian. But that's years. <laughs> I don't think so. Years of buildup. Yes. I don't know. I gotta he see. Said, I gotta see Captain America: uh, Winter Soldier again. He says, "Oh, oh let's say, I, gotta, I gotta see the Captain America sex tape." Really, <laughs> no, 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 no. The, no. At least until this. You watch it, Ruben. I can't confirm or deny that. Amazing, amazing. That's America's ass. That is America's ass. Mm-hmm. Do we have any favorite scenes of the movie? You want to bring up? Um, for me, it's when he first gets into that first fight, and, and you just see him with the trash can shield. It's great. I could do this all day. Fake feet. Oh, that fight. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. that fight. Okay, yeah, I know what you talk about. Yeah. That. Yeah, that's that's a good scene. The whole chase sequence after he like. Yeah. It's the serum is like one of like the best scenes of that movie, where he doesn't know how to run. <laughs> well, like, just... just seeing him, like he's like sprinting, then he realizes like he looks down at his body and he realizes he can go faster and he just yep. goes. Yeah. Awesome. I like, the, I like the kid going. Don't worry, Mister. I can I swim. Can swim. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I love um the scene when. Um, Johan takes the face off and you see Red Skull because like for me watching it when the bridge is starting to Mm -hmm. retract it really for me was like this divide between what makes Captain America him and what makes Red Skull him and and it's just like it was literally like (laughs) here's the physical divide between these two but we also have a uh, metaphorical divide between them I I like that I thought can't believe we haven't talked about Red Skull yet I thought he was perfect I really like Red Skull in this movie um, Hugo Weaving. He had like that. I know this is set in the 40s, but it was a movie made in 2011. Had that like old serial villain yeah. type thing where yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm yeah. larger than life. Um, so, for really yeah, like he's, al- he's almost a bit charismatic too. Like, I almost kind of like seeing his character. Right. Even though we know he's a bad guy. <laughs> I kind of want to root for him. Like, uh, Christian. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> 
for me, it, uh, his character harkens back to like a, a, a radio villain, where like, what will this guy do next time? You know, that's a horrible radio voice. Watch out for that Adolf Hitler boy. He's a bad egg. Yeah. Okay, Eric's is actually really good. Yeah, that was I like that. Dude, actually, real quick, while, while Eric brought it up, I, and I guess it's not I'm thinking about it. One of the things I really liked about Red Skull is, like, he obviously he's very close to, like, the character of what Hitler was. Or not even character, the person that Hitler was. And one thing this movie gets right about history that I almost forget about is that Nikola Tesla used to, like, make these, like, insane we- weapons for, like, Germany back when he was, like, a, a scientist there. And oh, he, supposedly, he made, like, insane stuff that he was terrified by that, like, would have, like, won the war for, like, Nazi Germany. And he just destroyed a bunch of stuff. You get well, you get some of that even in, like, Nazi zombies from Call of Duty, but... I mean, if we're yeah, going crazy that route, stuff. I think... I don't know, let me not dive deep Here, into the conspiracy sure, sure. theories of... World War One, uh, World War Two. I'm about to blow y'all's mind. You ready to hear it? Yeah. A few yeah. things. One, Joe Johnson directed the Rocketeer, which you definitely yeah. can get Rocketeer vibes in this movie. Of I course. Guess. Um, he also was the uh, visual arts, di- visual effects artist and art director for Raiders of the Lost Ark. So that one scene where he talks about Hitler going in the desert looking for trinkets. Yep. Mm. That's yep. I uh, thought that was great. Um, so yeah, that was really cool. Um, I liked how Johann Schmidt was like, Hitler's stupid. <laughs> oh <laughs> like, yeah, I was just gonna mention like, that. I don't, I don't care about what he does. Like the Fuhrer is old news. I'm I'm the I'm the show now. Yeah, so, he's I, like, I well, it, it, the Nazis. We we're done with the Nazis. We're we're, we're gonna start our own stuff. <laughs> we're using the Nazis. So yeah, I thought that was cool. I thought that yeah. was really cool. Fun little thing. Also, did I forgot Joe Johnson directed Jurassic Park three, so like his creds kind of come down just a little bit. Jurassic I Park three or Jurassic up. World. Jurassic Park three. Okay, uh, just the the one, with the pterodact- one. Yeah, the pterodactyls. Did you hear about that crazy, insane uh, Jurassic Park theory that they're all fake? Not that Stop. the movies are all fake. The the dinosaurs Wait. are all fake. Stop it! I'm gonna stop they, you right now. Aren't they? Like, oh, I guess they're clones, aren't they? Right. They're clones, yeah, but in the in the the movie universe, they're saying that it's not clones; that they're all just fake dinosaurs. They're like the robots yeah. or something. Yeah, that's terrible. Please never say it to me again. Wow. Okay. Better not talk about dinosaurs that way ever again, Ruben. Do you know dinosaurs? That T Rex ate that guy. Dinosaurs you know who you're talking to? That's Eric, the king of Jurassic Park. So yeah, don't. Eric, I am have one large up, uh, popcorn. Jurassic Park. We talk about it. I'm glad you brought up the Rockets here and just Joe Johnson in, in, in particular because, yeah, he, he does great stuff like period pieces yeah. like like the Rockets here. There's, a, there's another moment that I wanted to bring up as far as like favorite scenes that uh, I didn't consider it my favorite scene then, but this scene is better after watching Endgame. It's when um, they're all at the Stark Expo and Bucky is leaving. Uh, he ships off to war the very next morning and he's saying goodbye to Steve and he says, I didn't write that what Steve says. Or what, or what Bucky says. Is the thing is like, don't do anything stupid. How yep. can I? Yeah, you're taking How all the stupid I, with you. Taking all stupid with you. Yep. And that moment hits a lot harder after watching Endgame. Yeah. Ruben's about to cry. <laughs> no, I'm not. I also wrote down another moment um, yes, when <laughs> <laughs> the night before uh, Steve gets the serum. It's uh, him and Dr. Ers- Erskine having a conversation and like on the, the two cots. And uh, uh, Cap asks, why me? To which Dr. Erskine says um, a, lot of, a lot of stuff, but essentially like, good becomes great, bad becomes worse. Weak man knows the value of strength and knows compassion. And he says, stay who you are, not a good man. Not a... Fuck. I miss... I... Oh no, I messed up. Stay a good man. And he points to his heart. One of the, one of the most powerful scenes in that movie. But also one of the best it, scenes where he also was like, "Oh, you can't drink this. You have, you have a uh, procedure tomorrow." And he's like, "You're gonna save it for me?" He's like, "No, I'm gonna drink it myself." So, what about you? I don't have procedure tomorrow. 
Oh, I also like when, when he's counting down to when, before Steve is getting the serum and just Erskine touches his shoulder just like right before it starts just to reassure mm. like Steve everything will be okay. Is everything all right? Oh, that wasn't so bad. That's what the penis said. <laughs> I, enjoyed, I enjoyed that one. Um, and I'll then the impromptu um, Haley Atwell uh, peck touch. The totally oh. improv one. Oh, yeah. Was it improv? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, she was. She was like that. That wasn't like she was so just like, oh my god. Oh. Told me uh, you wouldn't want to touch his pecs, though. I wouldn't want. To I mean, touch pecs. yeah, I'm. I'm safe. I'm comfortable saying that. Yeah, just. just oh man. Just, yeah. I have some more stuff here for us to discuss as we're getting closer to the end. Bucky, as a character in this movie. Did we ever think he'd come back as the Winter Soldier? Did you ever think that would be a possibility? Honestly, if I'm being honest, 100%, I completely forgot about Bucky. <laughs> uh, wow. Not in this movie. Like, when I first saw it, and then when uh, Winter Soldier came out, I completely forgot who Bucky was. If that makes sense. I'm not a big... Really? DC. Yeah, I'm not a big DC... Uh, no, I well, am a big... DC comics guy. I'm not a big uh, Marvel comics guy. So, okay. very interesting. So, I knew, like, Bucky's story. I know he becomes the Winter Soldier. So, I didn't know they were going to do a Winter Soldier story. Uh, and when they said that, hey, the next movie, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, oh, Bucky's coming back. So, that'll be, that'll be fun. So, uh, I think Bucky was important here just to show the friendship. That's about it. Bucky's really not that special in this movie, honestly. Yeah. Um, but it just shows that this is probably the most important person in Steve Rogers' life yep. right now. So um, that's all he was there for. Yeah, he becomes a war hero just, just basically just to go search for Bucky, just on the off chance that Bucky may be still alive. So, yeah. We already touched on Tommy Lee Jones and Do- Dr. Erskine. Uh, Dr. Zola. I-, I like him in this movie. That is okay. I do too. Um, I did like that one scene. Like, what is this? It's cow. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The scene I like the I, best I, with him. Oh, sorry, Christian, go ahead. No, you might, you might answer it. Go ahead. Oh, the scene I like best with him, he's, where, uh, he's like, what are you doing when uh, Schmidt is just, like, launching all these, uh, I guess, bombs, like, blowing up the place? And he's like... You know, he points at Captain America on the screen. He's like, the enemy's already here or something like that. And he's just looking at him. Are you dumb? We're still here. <laughs> you have a chance to escape. Yeah, but like seven minutes isn't that much of a chance to escape, you know? Barely enough time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for me, yeah, this scene, like this scene, it, he, he's just always like, he's a smart guy. He's a very competent guy. But he's living in the shadow of uh, of Red School. Yep. Like he's afraid of him. And I get that when like Red School is being painted, which I wish we could see the painting. But oh, like, oh, man. what do you think, Doctor Zola? Like pauses, a masterpiece. We just might see away. it. We might see it in uh, Loki. Who knows? Tesseract is there. That's true. I'm just saying. By the way, Tesseract, Space Stone, correct? Yeah, I, I was gonna ask that too. Yeah, it's. I'm assuming it's the Space Stone because how the hell is did Red it Skull is. get to? Uh, yeah, Vormir. Vormir. I almost said Vandermeer, but that's that's. I almost said Vermeer from Mass Effect. <laughs> uh, and then we didn't touch on Peggy th- too much. What do we think of Steve's relationship with Peggy? Oh, Adorable, perfection. I I love them t- those yeah. two. Right. That's like this. Oh, sorry, I cut you off. No, go for it. No, please, please, please. Okay, I'm gonna go for it. Are you I, I didn't, Stark I, Von doing? <laughs> Come on. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, no, man. for me, it just like I didn't think I, I like was falling in love with these characters like the first time I saw it until we get to the moment where and like Steve is sacrificing himself, and she's crying over Steve, and like I, I realize that like I'm tearing up, and they're like they're not gonna get their their dance, and like, oh my god, these two deserve each other so much. So much. And and they never got it until they f- they finally did. But ah, uh, it it, 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 in this movie it hurts. Yeah. 
So I got a, I got a couple of scenes of Peggy that I love. Um, got one scene where like everyone's like, all right, whoever gets that flag down gets to sit in the back with Agent Carter on the way back. And then, you know, Steve just takes the pole down. Love that. Yeah. Um, love the scene when they're going to Steve's procedure and they're talking about having a dance partner. Um, that one was great. Um, I love the badass scene of Peggy after he sees after she sees Steve kiss the girl. Uh, she just shoots at him. That was so cool. Oh, man. Natalie Dormer, by the way. Yeah, insane. Um, let's see what else. I love the scene when she's watching the uh, the footage and she sees that Cap sees that Steve has her picture in his like watch or something. I love that. Mm-hmm. That one was really nice. Um, the same yeah, where she. Peggy... Peggy was great. Like she, and the, the what was great about it, it wasn't like she was just some love interest. Like she was a strong character. Oh yeah, that's why she's own. so good. Right? Yeah, yeah. So. I think for for me, I think of Peggy as for like what Eric said earlier. I don't think she's a side character at all. I think she, she's definitely like a main character, and she's her own character, yeah. uh, independent of of Steve for sure. And one of the moments I can think of that like for me makes her like such a cool character there's two actually i can think of there's one when they're at boot camp and she kicks that dude like punches right in the him. junk or yeah. oh punches him that's right yeah punches him first and then i think she yeah she does kick him in the junk i think no sorry she doesn't i apologize yeah it's just maybe i just dudes. maybe i just wish she did yeah me too to me uh but the second is when uh the 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 guy is getting away with the serum like the the spy and like she's ready to lay down her life uh, in order to stop this guy, and she's like about to shoot him as the car is like about to run him, run her over, and Steve comes to the rescue. He's like, "What are you doing? I had him." And that just shows how like uh, committed she is. Commi- yeah, committed is a good word for it. Yeah, absolutely. Her resolve. Yeah. Um, my favorite scene of Peggy is actually when um, Steve is forming his own crew and. You know, she comes into the bar with the red dress and she's like, uh, she's looking for a dance partner. And he, Bucky's like, yeah, let, let, let's go right now. Let's go right now. And she's like, nah, it's got to be the right one. It, it just, I'm a sucker for love. Never, she never breaks eye contact with Steve, nope. even though Bucky's like talking to her. God. I there. want a girlfriend. <laughs> what did you say? I want a girlfriend. <laughs> I was going to, this is the segment where I was just going to bring in some Doctor Who, like the impossible girl. She's here. Like, isn't that crazy? Are we not going to discuss that? Clara? I know she was, I know she was in it. I Uh, didn't know you wanted to take time to talk about it. I'm just, uh, I didn't, I was just bringing it up. Thought it was pretty funny. Not really. I have a question for Eric. Mm. Where's the best place to talk about Stanley? Is it is it during the conversation in the movie or when we get to your segment? I think it's when we. You know, I guess it could be whenever, really, because like we were talking about organically, it just came up last week for Thor, right. so it really hasn't come up organically this one. So, I guess that kind of shows where it stands, really. I um, yeah yeah. So. I think just whenever, whenever it just shows up, I think that that's best to talk about it. Should we do it now? Because it just kind of happens, you know. It's yeah. like in the middle of all these events, yep. sure. And it's right before like a big montage that like is a little bit forgettable. It's just Steve doing a bunch of crazy stuff with like blowing up super tanks and whatnot. Mm. Yeah, we can talk about it now. That's fine. Take the reins, my man. So we're ranking the Stanley cameos. Guys, wait, it's my Ruben. You, it's you're my in charge of this. Yeah, oh, my bad, my, my bad, my bad. It's okay, it's all right. Um, where do we want to rank uh, Captain America, the first Avenger Stanley cameo? I, I did like the line of I thought he'd be taller, yeah. I, I thought that was, I thought that was fun. And I guess, like, for me, it just he's got speaking lines. The best one is when he actually talks, not mm-hmm. when he's just there. So for me, I got to put this at two. Oh, two. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, like the Hugh Hefner one, it's just like, oh, he looks like he Hugh Hefner. Around, there yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. There's something quaint about him just standing like in a robe at this like huge like, ho- like party. For me, I would maybe even put it under Hugh Hefner. Yeah, that's I'm where okay. I was I'm thinking. I'm okay with that. 
Hey, I'm okay with that. Yeah, but now you kind of like got me thinking. Maybe it is above Hugh Hefner. I, I'm I'm just I was stating my. I do piece. like the line. I, I'm I'm sorry, Christian. I'm gonna have to put this at number two. This is your thing. I know, but I'm just saying. It's not better than Thor, though. No. <laughs> Did I get it? No, it's not better than Thor, unfortunately. Oh man. I miss a good Stanley cameo because we don't get that in the MCU shows. Yeah. Supposedly the rumor was that they filmed a bunch of extra stuff so that they could they could continue to use these small cameos in other MCU films. I don't know if that's going to be true or not. I'm still waiting for more. <laughs> we'll see, I guess. Uh, that's the best I can get. The commentator uh, in the audience. So I wrote it down as like a the White House Metal Service. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, commentator in the audience. <laughs> like that's all I could think of. White House Medal of Honor. Uh, yeah, that's, that's cool. Tweet. I'm still sticking with my commentator joke. So what is our li- what is our list looking like, Ruben? Uh, so so far we have um, Iron Man two at number five with the Larry King cameo. Iron Man, uh, ooh, The Incredible Hulk uh, at number four with the old man dying from radiation poisoning, we assume. Um, Iron Man, number one at number three as Hugh Hefner. Captain America, the first Avenger at number two as the White House Medal of Honor commentator. And, of course, number one is Thor with the cameo of the pickup truck guy get, trying to lift the hammer. <laughs> Amazing. Great. So it feels like we're wrapping up here. Is there anything we, we want to talk about that we haven't talked about before at all with uh, Captain America? Any other points we need to touch on? I think just, it's just a, a strong movie. Yeah. Red Skull's face is a little weird. It's those cheekbones. I do think the strongest element is the characters in it. Not so much the plot. I think Hugo Weaving does a fantastic job with the Red Skull. Absolutely. Peggy's character. Uh, uh, obviously, Steve Rogers. And I think some of the plot... like That, that middle section, I felt, to me, felt a little bit long in terms of like movie. But it, it is a great, a great MCU film. Awesome suit, by the way. Oh, I'm really yeah. happy. I was worried going into this, seeing this movie, like how the suit would look because i'm sure we all like grew up watching the cartoons and captain america's got the wing-tipped head uh, mm-hmm. helmet and so i was really worried about it and then this movie came out like that's a freaking awesome suit yeah that they did because it's practical yep yeah it wasn't just let's throw some spandex on like this was a practical um piece of uh gear so yeah yeah the costume design in most of the mcu stuff like can be hit or miss it's usually a hit for me captain america in particular like always looks really cool oh my god that's a perfect suit i did like the scene when he steals like the helmet for the first time and it's just one of like the the women's helmets with yep. the, with the a on it yeah pretty clever uh, oh also yeah, come on his sorry. motorcycle like that's fu- that's a badass motorcycle. that's cool yeah oh man absolutely Cap's a badass. He is. Okay. Let's uh let's rank the villains first, I think, right? Alright, boys, girls. So, like I always say, what is a hero without a good villain? So, we here at the Nelton Conquest are going to rank the bad guys in the MCU. So let's give you where it stands right now. At number four, we have Abomination slash Thunderbolt Ross from The Incredible Hulk. Number three, we have Whiplash slash Justin Hammer from Iron Man 2. Number two, we have Obadiah Stane from Iron Man 1. And at number one, we have Loki from Thor. So, gentlemen, where do we think the Red Skull falls? For me, I think this is uh, underneath Loki as Um, at number two. I'm I'm agreeing with you because like while that like Ruben described that radio drama villain esque thing from him could only get so far. I mean he did have motivations where it's just I just want to 
take over the world, which makes sense in like a 40s piece. Um, yep. But other than that, there wasn't like really anything other than I'm the bad guy, clearly. Um, Eric, but, that was per you literally read my notes. It's like, aside from power, what are his motivations? Question mark. So, yeah. yeah. So, I think his campiness is what has him so high for me also. So that's that's what I got. Ruben, what you think? Um, originally, I wanted to say it was to beats Loki without a without a chance. Wow! But I have to agree with you guys. It's definitely Obadiah Stain is is great. Don't get me wrong, but like Hugo Weaving just has this aura, which makes me fear him. So I'm gonna have to go with number two. I just I want to I want to smell Obadiah's breath just once. <laughs> Mm, whiskey. I just want to like rub the head. Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, wow. there is our new number two, Red Skull from Captain America: The First Avenger. So. Wonder how long he'll stay in the top five. I'm curious. Not very long for me. We got a okay. lot of great villains coming up. We also have a lot of so, shitty villains, though. We do. We do have some bad. You know what? Actually, let me retract that statement. I see him being number in the top five for a little bit. For a good while. Once we reach phase three, I think. Once we reach phase three. Yeah. All this. So, yeah. Red Skull. Red, Red Skull is going to be comfortable for a little bit. So, I think the consensus here is that we all agree Captain America is a good movie. Mm -hmm. But I think the question here, and it's going to be a tough discussion, is whether or not it's better than Iron Man. You know what I mean? I think that I think that's what we're following right here. So let's let let let's just rank the Marvel movies so far. We're getting to the segment. Uh, I'll catch you up on where our list is looking like right now. Of course, number four down below, The Incredible Hulk. Three is Thor. Two, Iron Man. Two and one, the very first Iron Man. Where does Captain America rank for you, Eric? Uh, out of these five movies, it is number one for me. Um, Captain America. Ooh is a very strong movie. There are some parts that falter a little bit. Um, like, the montage stuff was cool when they were taking down all the factories. Um, Could have not used that, but such a strong character. Like, you're right, Christian, this this movie is about the characters, and the char all the characters here are much better than, I think, Iron Man's characters. Um, in, like, pound for pound. I mean, I mean, if you got to take into uh, Yensid and all them, I think Captain America's core of characters are better. Um, I do think the plot of Iron Man 1 is better, um, but I got to take everything into account, not just plot. And where Iron Man struggles for me is that third act. Third act's not really that great. The first two were fantastic. Uh, but overall, I put this above Iron Man 1 by like a, like a smidge. I, uh, okay. I love this movie. It's, really, it's probably, for me, the most underrated MCU movie. It's really good. Ruben. Christian, are you, are you sure you want to do this? Why don't you go first? I'll save my... Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Eric is right in a lot of ways, and I respect his opinion but I don't think it's stronger than, than Iron Man. I think Iron Man 1 as a movie entirely is a lot stronger. Pound for pound, beat, per, beat to beat, Iron Man 1, I think, wins. Even though I think the character of Steve Rogers is, is clearly like one that we relate to more than Robert Downey Jr. And honestly, I have to disagree. I think the third act of Iron Man is, for me, more entertaining than the third act of Captain America. I just like start to not, not care when all this like super base stuff is going on. It's nothing but like explosions and Cap just like running and like I, I i just start to it starts to lose me a little bit that's fair so where do you put like I, number two i would i mean number two it's still a really good movie but i i think iron man for me is just a stronger movie altogether okay ruben where's where's cat fallen buddy to quote a future movie that is probably i think it's actually the oh, next God. movie that we're gonna be doing big man in a suit of armor Take that off. What are you? I'm sorry. Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. That's right. And to quote, uh, to take another quote, I know guys with none of that worth 10 of you. 
So it sounds like Captain America is our new number one. I'm is sorry, that correct? Christian, Captain America That's is fine. One. Listen, it's not my number one, but it, it's it's our number one. How about that? It is now. It's your number one now. Ladies and gentlemen, our new list goes like this. Number five, The Incredible Hulk. Four, Thor. Three, Iron Man 2. Two, Iron Man. And one, Captain America, the first Avenger. Just write that in. I can't believe we haven't even talked about the end credits, uh, the end scene. It's really cool. Just the the whole it's future li- thing. I love. Was it. it end credits? That was not end credits. That was, was part of the, the end of the movie. Excuse me, the end of the movie. That part was of, cool. We should touch on this for a quick second. Yeah. Eric, just, go ahead. Uh, it's just all all this new stuff happening to him. He's in Times Square. He doesn't know what the fuck is going on. And then Nick Fury's like, "Cap, Cap, what's going on? Uh, what you thinking about?" He, all Cap can think about is, "I had a date." Ah, uh, heartbreaking. It's dude. So good. And honestly, it was so exciting. It's like, oh my god, he's he's here. He's in he's in our time now. Now he's gonna get to meet all these characters that we like we know, and it's very exciting. And then we get the post credit scene, which is literally just like a semi trailer for the next movie. Was hyped. I can't tell you how Super hyped I was seeing that. I was like, oh my god, there it is. We're gonna have to talk next step next time we do this because we're gonna start Loki next week. That's right. When we're going to watch the Avengers, I'm gonna make you guys watch the Avengers trailer. That's just like the one of the worst trailers I've it's, ever seen in my it's life. It's not good. It's not good. Oh boy. Awesome. Ruben, I see you typing up some stuff for plugs. Do you want to take it away? Uh, uh well, I'm sorry. I should have. Not bad words. <laughs> I should have like. Well, we could start plugs. Well, Christian, you go first. Yeah, if you enjoyed me speaking, you can follow me at ISO Christian over on Twitter. Um, I usually talk about soccer and my movie podcast, movie podcast, <laughs> Large Popcorn, uh, to hear all my takes on movies. And I'm also starting a new uh, challenge over on Twitch. If I get enough, enough challenge points with my community, I'm going to do an interview stream with our friend Islam Dubai over in Denmark. We're going to do the Hot, Hot Ones Season 15 uh pack challenge where we eat through the uh the hot the hot sauces it's gonna be a lot of fun oh, and very no. torturous so stay tuned okay all right eric where can people find you uh hi uh eric c Ginn on twitter uh it's mainly um sports mcu stuff really um let's see nba playoffs are still going on sorry about them trailblazers christian it's okay. they, just, they need like a fresh coat of paint. Some, something's not working there. But they got rid of the coach. See what happens there. Um, uh, then that, happy Pride Month, everybody. Um, happy Pride yeah. Month. Love everyone. Uh, unless you're a Nazi, then fuck you. Um, so that's, that's about it. Uh, do we have the Pride merchandise? Is that the merchandise? Uh, that is going up next week. Um, okay. Yeah, I I'm still working on the the graphic and trying to okay. figure out what colors it fits best on. Um, but yeah, uh, do what you can. Pride Month, fantastic. The uh, donate to a charity supporting LGBTQ uh, TIA plus. Is that is yeah, that? I make sure I got it. Um, Trevor Project is one. Um, I think it's great uh, charity. So yeah, yep. like I said. Give, um, if you're both, if everyone's fully vaccinated, give a loved one a hug. Tell them you love them. I want to hug Eric so bad. I want to hug you so bad. You know, just tell you everything's going to be okay. I appreciate that. No problem. Um, you could find me, uh, not really on Twitter, uh, at that guy Tuesday. I'm more on Instagram and Facebook, I guess. Um... Yeah, doing some stuff and some things. Make sure to follow our Twitter at Penultimate Conquest. That's right. For a bunch of cool stuff on there. Down below, you can see it next to Eric's face. Nope, next to your face. Go this way. Um. Yes. So, uh, E3 is next week. So we. Uh, this is actually, I think, our only show this week because i don't want to burn out anybody um we have a lot of plans that i am currently working on 
the, the scheduling wise. So uh, stay tuned. This Sunday, I believe, is us doing E three stuff. Unless there's a Saturday stuff. I'm yeah, not... there's Thursday. Yeah. There's one Thursday. The yeah. summer preview, the Jeff Keeley one, where we're probably gonna get Elden Ring stuff, Ruben. So uh, you think Jeff mm-hmm. Keeley is a pain? Jeff's in my got ass. that poll. What? He does have that poll. Like, why? Jeff's I have a doctor's pool. appointment. Like, you didn't bother to even text me to let me know, like, hey, is this cool? Like, E3 is a mess this year, dude. It's a <sighs> mess. <laughs> like, what couldn't this been done on a Wednesday? But anyway, uh, we're going to put up our sc- streaming schedule this weekend only on twitter.com slash Conquest. So stay tuned. That's it. Amazing. That's all I got. Bye, everyone. Until next so time. Get ready for Loki.